case you just joining us, still money line with Nancy. Uh, my guest are joining me right now. I did say at the beginning of the program that I'll be looking at the 41 page document released by the presidency listing President Buhari's achievements. This is it. I printed it out. In fact, the staple couldn't hold it together. That's staple <laughs> stuff. <laughs> All right, my guest is joining me right now. Ahmed Yusuf, as well as Chijoke Kechuku, two gentlemen. Good morning to you and welcome mm. to the show. Good morning. Um, mm. We were saying, talking before the break, the 41 yes. page, and you said it's actually a book. <laughs> it's a book. <laughs> it's a book. President Buhari has he written a book. I don't think this so. This is the book. This, this is the book. <laughs> President Buhari has not written a book, even since he left military. Anyway, I'm not, you know, it may <laughs> write, it may not write, but perhaps. So welcome, gentlemen. Okay. It's a book, isn't it? Yes, it is. Why it, did you say so? It says a lot. Uh, however, like we were saying, people haven't felt the impact. And for me, the articulate reason is liquidity. What people bother about is what can I buy with what amount of money? How does it impact in my life? That is the most but important But isn't that thing. genuine enough? Because that is what... But that's real. Be. That's <laughs> real. And I think that is where the government policy mm. has not addressed. If you spend 10 billion on infrastructure, it's supposed to create jobs. But when you give a Julius Baga 10 billion naira, they use machines. So you have to create a way. And the money, the profit the money goes, goes out away. back to Germany. Yeah, so, but if you, employ, if, you create a, if you go to a rural road and you break it into 10, 10 kilometers and you give a group of people and give them training and then structure, you will find automatically that money goes into the economy and people will begin to fill it. But there is no plan for such arrangements. So does that mean that even with the three years report card that uh, the president has uh, released, mm. This was released three days after the Democracy Day yes, speech. Yes. Does that mean that there is no nexus between what government policy is about and the impact of people? Because at the end of the day, what is government for? Life, security, mm -hmm. for the people actually. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. that's it. That summarizes mm -hmm. it. For the people in every ramification. So. Yeah, when you showed us this, I also said the government needed to flaunt whatever they have done. Mm. Um, a lot has taken place in, in, in actual sense. A lot has taken place. If you consider where this particular government is coming from, um, usually when people want to compare previous and now, I tell them no. The narratives are different. Um, the narratives, some of them came out of um, efforts made, external efforts. Some of them, again, are internal efforts. But to consider that a lot has really taken place um, since they came in, to today, um, a lot of um, positions that were not there before. Let us even take the ERGP um, uh, in, in perspective. You see that um, for the, f let me not say for the first time, but this is a government that said, we are going, this is our growth plan. This is what it's going to look like from 2007 to 2017 to 2020. And they are gradually looking into all the aspects of the ERGP to make sure that um, the various sectors, they have considered priority sectors uh, growing. Um, if we consider areas in agriculture, I'm sure you know, Nancy, that agriculture has actually done relatively well in this particular dispensation. Crop production. Crop production, yes. Uh, Crop production. rice. Exactly, rice. Mm -hmm. um, it has done, we've never reached this extent before in, in, in crop production. Rice has done well. Assuming we... But the you question yes. also, it, yes. you know, I don't know. Because the thing is, in as much as what we're saying, I, I come here, I talk so much in live studio with guests, yes. experts, even the regulators, the men themselves, and all of that. But what we see on the street is different. We're talking about just this rice, for example. Okay, Local rice, the availability in the market is not that much. I sent my team on a survey, market survey. We've done it, I think, two times in three weeks. The prices are high. Affordability I, I, and availability I, I, is there, have which have also taken up with the CBN, this yes. Ancoboras program. So yes. if we're saying rice, we should expect that local rice should be cheaper than even foreign rice. No, foreign? madam. No, madam. Okay. okay, sir. You see, the global world, it's a war. Um, Thailand is ready to subsidize any rice being exported to Nigeria. Which they've done. Which they will continue to do. Yeah. So you can, they will always undermine your price. But doesn't that put us 
in a very tight situation to even show we don't even know what we're doing. Because if we're saying let's promote our local rice, foreign rice should not be found in the market in the first place. So where are they coming well, from? No, 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 it's no, not 100% bad. Yes. It, I think there's a small window they gave for them. That's mm -hmm. one. Secondly, we know how porous our borders are. That's what I'm thirdly, saying. Thirdly, the only way government could come in to say, okay, we will subsidize rice, then it become another scam. So let's not go in there. But isn't because it also factors of demand and supply? Yeah, so those that, of you that are economists that, that's now, that's now where I'm coming if there's more demand, you know, uh, uh, if there's more supply, yes. there will be demand. You, but you cannot support. grow pro production on agriculture overnight. Yes. The reason why... But this is a program that has been on for a while. Yes. The reason why the local rice is still having its high price is just like you said, demand and supply. Up to today. Of course, don't forget that rice was banned. Importation of rice was banned. And it, it, the, the, the responsibility of producing enough rice for this country rested on local manufacturing and production. Um, some of the meals you are see, seeing today just sprang up a few months ago, some of them one year ago, and as the case may be. The demand for rice is still not been able to be met with the supply. Yes. And once you have the demand higher than the supply, the price will still remain up. So the only solution to bringing down the price of rice, local rice, is to ensure that the programs that are already that are, that are already in the market, the Uncle Brass program, mm -hmm. in, encouraging more millers and more growers, encouraging more farmers in that in that uh, sector, should continue and have many more. Once we have many more and increase the capacity of these people in uh, using facilities, create facilities, or things like. That. Once we have supply, increasing or doubling what it is today, you see that that price will be forced to the, to come down. Let me explain something. You see, a farmer grows rice purely for the economic value of it. He grows corn because there's an industrial value for it. He grows um, uh, maize also for the same reason. But what happens? He gets what they call farm gate price for those commodities. Mm -hmm. Now, he will now be worried, should I produce 50 tons of this or 20 tons? Now, if on the other hand you create a com you energize the commodity exchange, which we have in Nigeria, Nobody will we go. Have, but it's not strengthening. Yeah, so because of that. one thing. Because we have not mandated all large-scale commodity purchase to come from the commodity exchange. I, if Nigerian flour mills want 50,000 tons of 50 tons of, of X, they go to the villages and pay peanuts and collect it. They don't pay the global price for those commodities. So what happens is the farmer is left pauperized. But if he gets good value for his price, he will double up. And grow but, but, but you know, in as much as I want to clap for especially what, what they say for agriculture, hmm. I also think that there is, it's, you know, it's like a web from here, 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 yes. here. It's not just about touting crop production. Yes. It's about that if you want to be self-sufficient in food, mm -hmm. it's not just only about rice. It's yes. also also about other, other crops. food yes. products mm -hmm. that we produce. Right, and yeah. we do have good soil and all of that. Yes. You've talked about the commodities exchange mm -hmm. is one of it. We also need to also talk about the aid to farmers, even in terms of yes. capital, in terms of what, in terms primary of fertilizers. Processing. Primary processing. I so process food. What are, you know, I can tell you. Yeah, so that we shouldn't the just cost be of processing, mouth the cost for of doing processing is difficult. Nothing. Otherwise, tomato, we, we have actually surpassed our needs in terms of tomato, but we cannot preserve it. But the tomato we can processing it. companies are, are not also now, now looking, they, they, they are looking for tomatoes, some are closing down. The, the reason is because there is a gap between where they are producing, if they go to Kano and set it up, the ones in Kano are not complaining for so the, the question is they cannot bring process as much. But if you go to Lagos and set up a tomato paste factory, what happens? You will be dealing with products that are damaged. And there is no, and I repeat, no clear, if you have a commodity exchange, before your goods are accepted in a warehouse, they must meet a certain standard. packaging standard. You know, what I'm saying are. is that demandation is not there. There is no reason why I should go to commodity exchange when I can go to the market and pick it up. Okay, yeah. let's still, let's leave a Greek for a bit. Of course, we cannot finish <laughs> this 41 page, especially the economy <laughs> side in. Yeah, in fact, one week, <laughs> let's put it at that. So let's see, take the much we can take. Mm. Now, you did talk about this administration flaunting what it, it has. Why did you say so? And I want to disagree with you on that. Yeah, um, we are looking at the macroeconomic uh, indicators, you know. And for you to know how well an economy is doing, um, let us even look at the various areas where they have 
done well. We're looking at what our Foreign Reserve is doing today, which you mentioned already while you mm -hmm. were reading your news. Um, what was it before now? Of course, granted that uh, a price of oil has risen and production capacity has also risen to 2 million barrels a, a, a day. Um, these are the things contributing to that Foreign Reserve. But what about the willingness to actually keep some away as Foreign Reserve? What about if we had this high, high price of oil yet we're not increasing our reserves. Let us even put reserve, foreign reserves uh, away. In the past, you know how well the country has stabilized the foreign, 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 foreign exchange uh, market. Um, what we used to have was a, a situation where- But this was a foreign exchange market that Naira depreciated to about 550 within these three years. That's right. And now coming down to about 360. That's, that's isn't right. Isn't it? Now yes. you talked about foreign reserves. We had foreign reserves in $5 billion, $29 billion before, years before. Uh, we also had when it was as high as $62 two yes, billion. Dollars. Yes. In 2008, I mean, during, it was... Uh, during mm. uh, the... Um, I think or even Obasanjo's yes, case, it was up to Yes, in 2008, it was up to, it was yes, up to it, $62 it, billion. it was up to that. Yes. Now, you talked about macroeconomic indices. Let's take GDP growth. That's what is okay. number one. That's right. For the, you take a look at what happened prior to when president came in. Now, let me read this tweet. And it was very interesting to me. When I saw it this morning, Shadow Walker, he, he tweeted before the show started. He said, you people could be so funny. How is this economy out of recession? An economy that was growing, then he crashed it and built little. Do you call that out of recession? Until he grows the economy above what he meant, the economy is not out of recession. Madam, yeah. I, I want to make that, uh, th that statement wrong. If you look at the graph of the GDP, it was already coming down. It was already coming down. There was nothing that was, in fact, it was just by the election, immediately after the election, that particular quarter, that the thing stabilized a little bit and continued descending. The GDP growth when the Mr. President came yes. was in the range of 3%. Yes, but it was going down. It was declining. It was about 4 or 5% before that. It was actually on the decline. I did a very good study of that. So that statement is actually way off. What for me matters here is the speed with which they are doing things no, is no, too no, slow. No, the, the question, which mm. you, you know, one, uh, okay. in as much, I'm looking at this fact sheet. I'm taking the ones I'm taking. Mm. I'm also taking a look at just opposing it. Yes. If the president had done this, would this have happened? You, you, let's talk about the GDP numbers, right, because okay. which is very critical. Okay, very critical. But right. the other aspect will be the impact on Nigerians, yes, yes, which yes, is another yes, ballgame. Yes, yes. Now, I have Buhari Scorecard here. He's with me here on the mm, phone. The yes, GDP, right. I had mm, to put mm, it together. Mm, yes, right. 2014 to 2018. I don't know if we have that card. Let's put it on the screen. We, did, we took it last week. For, from 2014, the GDP the numbers was, was at about 6%. Yes. We grew first quarter 6.21% mm -hmm. in the first quarter. 2014, ending 2014, it came down to mm -hmm. 5%. Mm -hmm. Now, in 2015, from the first quarter, it was at 3.96%. So. In 2015, uh, late 2015, last quarter, it went to 2.11%. So. Now, in 2016, GDP was in the negative, yes. 0.67%. Yes, yes, yes. Now, the question is, President Buhari came in when the GDP numbers were still positive. They are positive, but declining. But declining, Good. but would he have done something? Well, that yes. That, yes. That was what yes. this person was talking about. Yes. So, so, I, I can so, tell so he could say, have done something. So with what but, this respondent But what could he have done? Say, the question is, what could he have done? He I, would I, have I, appointed I'm ministers I'm on I'm time. No, 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 I'm coming. What could he have done? No, see, let me tell you, madam. He would have said that he's hitting the world on time. The economy, even today, if you look at, we actually had a drop in the economy, in, the, in GDP growth of about uh, point something. Yeah, it was 2.11, mm -hmm. now it is 1.95. Yeah. Now, the actual reason is because of the prices in oil, production in oil. Just a slight drop, a slight drop in oil throws us off balance. I, 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 and there I was a continuous so. decline mm -hmm. in oil. Okay, Mr. Okay, call me so. here because okay, it, before um, we start boxing ourselves <laughs> here, yes, I, 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 don't know, I don't think so. Actually, um, <laughs> we saw a drop. In that, in that drop, we, that, that drop only came from non-oil sector. Um, otherwise, the oil sector grew, uh, which we saw. And um, yeah, it did. Um, we can even say that right now, the price of oil was in our favor. The production output was in our favor. But then they, I saw that the, the non-oil sector declined, yes. and that was where the problem was. But we're even from. battling with volume outputs. Yes. yes. We, you know, of course, we're battling with that. Now, um, what has really happened is that, just like you said, 
immediately he came in, the concentration was stifling the economy. Yes. The concentration was get arresting who had money and who didn't have money. So people who had money, investors who wanted to invest, to kept back their money. Nobody wanted to bring out the mo now, any money that in, me to in the circulation. Question of that body language that was said at That's the right. beginning of 2015, or That's when right. he took over in 2015. He was like, okay, that his famous speech, I'm for everybody, I'm, I'm for nobody, I'm for everybody. Or how did the president yeah. uh, uh, put it? But, you know, like they say, you must always stand for something or whatever. But people, the body language at that time, from May till about November or December, when their president appointed minister, a lot of people were now, no, nothing, nothing is, happened. Nobody, from that nobody, nobody can saying. dispute, nobody can dispute the fact that so perhaps he could if have the acted, was yes, managed well, well, he could have well, acted wouldn't have better. He would have had a much better. But what they what did they say was the reason? They said they made everything in a sky, but still doesn't mean you should have acted. That is the major, major fact. That four months or so of nothingness was it's more than crucial. Oh, is it the minister from, yeah. from May yeah. till about six, yes. six months? Six, six months. months. So so six months yeah. was very crucial. And I think that was, that, was major, that was a major the job, that, that was a major was a gaffe, that was a major that was a major gaffe, yes. Yeah. Yeah. The problem has also started again. Now when the executive order was ruled out, we, you know, one of it was the fact that we must sign our, our budget on time. Look at what has happened. Today is June. You see, sometimes it's so embarrassing to, to us as a country that a country that is supposed to have its fiscal year starting from January will have its budget signed into law in June, in July. Then it the is question. being justified now that at least the 2017 budget is still on. <laughs> it's still being so, rolled over. As far as the budget is not being implemented, there is no way you accept, as, um, expect a, a comfortable economy, a stable economy, as the case may be. And these are all the things contributing to some of the things we're discussing here. Okay, Dele on Twitter says, Nancy, facts and figures, the FG needs to inject more money into the economy for infrastructural and economic development of Nigeria. Buhari-led government can do better. God bless Nigeria. We've been told that I think oh, close to over two trillion naira has been injected now into the capital side of the but, budget. But just like you said, you see, to who? To who? That's the point. <laughs> you <laughs> see, and another thing we always keep missing in this: Nigerian economy is not federal government alone. Yes, the state side. It's alone. always the you see fifty percent. And it's also in this fact sheet. Fifty percent of the chunk of this economy is actually in the hands of the states. Yes, yes. And if the states invest in rural roads. And those are the roads you can do with certain level of standards that are a little bit lower. You can actually create jobs and create an economy. But everybody has turned into economic politics into a business. Discussing okay. this will take us a whole Yes, it will, so. because we've almost come to the end of the <laughs> yeah. show, and I'm really surprised, you know. Okay. They say, when you're we having have, fun. We haven't said much. We haven't said much. <laughs> when will we finish analyzing we'll, this for we'll tomorrow, page? We'll have to discuss it again. We have to discuss